Yeah, until this gets to the ultra late game point where we know Camille can be that, you know, tank, bruiser, control mage, everything she really does in the late game part. But starting out the hook shot here onto Chi Chi, I'm not really sure they can really punish this one. Yeah, they have gone aggressive, but ultimately J Team's bot lane will be able to just recall, get their health back. Hook shot level one means that obviously Lakai up in this top side is gonna have a very, very easy level one. Yeah. And, and one thing about oh sorry, you go. Oh uh, no, I was just gonna say uh like, I guess a way to look at these comps right now is that, you know, the Ground Zero comp, they they have more damage, right? But they don't have the consistent threat where you look at J-Team, lower damage, but they have a consistent way to do damage. They have the Maokai CC and the Braum. I think the Ground Zero comp relies on Kurak, you know, ceasing his members up, but it's so hard for him to go in and get out. He's going to go in, get tagged up by Braum, double AD carry is going to CC him up, you know, the Kai's going to be doing so much in the back line there, and... You know, where, while Grounds have a lot of damage, none of these champions really enable each other to do damage besides Kurak. And I think that if Tien does dive in with the Hexic Ultimatum, he is just a target in these team fights. Yeah, absolutely. And similar, again, to uh, game number three of yesterday's series between Bliss and uh, Frank. It's game number three, life on the line. The team that just lost game number two have picked up the Camille in the top side. So we'll see if Tien can, unlike Yi Jiang, pick up that win. For the Camille, and I mean, Ground Zero, they're going to get that insta push bot as they are this. now going into Lava. Yeah, they have they have played this level one fantastically. Lava's going to have to flash away, this is going to be able to survive. Did manage to pick up at least one camp, but still, I mean, I think smart play there by the bot lane of Ground Zero to just smash in that first wave and come and meet up their jungler to defend his bot side jungle. Yeah, Grand Zero really recognized this one well. The fact that bot lane just starts in the wave and just hits the mini wave the entire time, whereas JT's bot lane is trying to enable Lava there in the jungle to make sure he gets that camp. They deny the wave, they run across Shen Fire, goes one camp straight to his red buff and just fights that one away. Knows that Maokai can't do that camp fast enough without that initial smite on the first camp. So nice to see they play that level one so well. And this is what I was talking about, the and this still invade is so hard to pull off. Even if they do still away that camp, this is just going to be those respawns happening for Shurnfire, and its next respawn cycling will be beneficial for him. So same mid lane matchup as we saw in game number one, but this time Minji has opted for the teleport instead of the barrier. So playing for a little bit more autonomy, especially in the middle stage of the game, and a little less pressure in the direct lane phase. Now Shurnfire is getting forced away from his blue buff, but did get it low enough to just be able to smite that one up. But still, it has been an annoying early game here for Shurnfire. He lost his Raptors, so ultimately going to be down one camp. Mm -hmm. uh, getting forced away from his Gromp, at least for the time being, as he doesn't know exactly where Lalva is on this Maokai. He does have the smite, so you know, now that he does know where Shurn is, he's going to walk in the river, deny this crab, and go back to his camps. I don't expect Shurn to be the one to, you know, invade in response, but he is a player who is down to be aggressive, and with Fighter TPing back on the mid wave, does have the cull, should get mid priority here. Might be an Ooh, A lot of but... damage. Kurek flashing away. Lemus, he's got to be careful. And the Xenoblade connects Kurek. here, but that is not what you wanted. Kurek going far too aggressive after using that flash. Goes back and not going to find what he wanted. Now trades in the top side. Lakai, he's getting low. It could be the opposite of what we've seen in the past where bot lane was winning, but Lakai going to lose his flash. Tien, really well timed aggression, knowing that his top laner is there to join him. And Lakai now. A bit of a weak point for the side of J Team after very early success in the bot side. GG lands everything and Lima survives. Ooh. The wherewithal to keep that potion tech and keeps him alive. To see what happened here. We know how Lima, I mean, correct did die, but how does the initial trade happen? Is it correct being a, the aggressor here, or is it you know J Team finding that engage onto correct here in the bush? Yeah, so he's just sort of standing around. I mean, probably could have uh, slowed down this replay a bit, made it made it a little bit quicker. But well, there we go. <laughs> There we go, okay, there, there go. it comes. It's just a Q landing and then the follow-up CC. Lemus, I mean, he has a lot of upfront damage, right, as a misfortune, but nowhere near the amount of consistency that an Ezreal can find, especially when you are landing those abilities. Um, probably the highest attack speed AD carry, or maybe maybe Zaya, when you use your W, but at mm -hmm. this stage of the game, it's, it's probably the Ezreal for five stacked up passive. Definitely an exceptional... Exceptionally strong champ at this point in the game when he has that passive stacked up and he can land those mystic shots with the, you know, press the attack. Rom Ezreal is just, you know, a very uh, old, strong combo, especially to these melee champs. You can't really do anything to fight back because it's just that instant stun. If they do want to disengage the one, they can, but they commit and they find the kill on the Kurak. So, well played by them there, but Tien in that 1v1 on the top side, finding the flash advantage is so huge. This is what he really does in this Camille well. He always finds these individual leads. 
through the experience he has on the champion and have to see if he can turn that into anything going forward. Well, Kai is proxying here and he did lose that flash. Shurnfire's on the top side of the map. This is a very, very questionable position for this Renekton to be in, but wise to where Shurnfire is with that ward over the wall and is going to be able to walk on out. Shurnfire, though, may be able to stop his recall. Ultimately not going to be able to find a kill. Potential trade of objectives here as well. Should just be, you know, the grubs going over to Shurnfire. You know, once, ten, once again, we see J-Team being the team to prioritize dragons. Last game, it was the two dragons even for the two respawns of the grubs. Obviously turned out extremely beneficial for them in the end, as they did get that uh, Hextech soul extremely early on in the game. And, you know, we just aren't really seeing the same value of the grubs as we were in the LCO. A lot of the time, uh, the, the teams who, you know, end up getting the grubs would just win through, like, the experience lead the jungler got and the fact that these lanes are just winning through, you know, getting that extra bit of gold from the chip damage you get onto those plates. But definitely not the case in these games. So far, it's a much slower, you know, performance. And I think that the Dragons just having a lot more overall impact in these games. Yeah, and Tally, on that point, I mean, we've had the Ocean Dragon come up. It's now the Mountain. There's a 50-50 for it to be one of the two best souls in the game or two of the worst souls in the game. Now, admittedly, I, I think actually maybe for the side of J-Team, Air Dragon's actually one of the better ones. So maybe you have like a 75 chance of a very beneficial dragon coming out uh, for J-Team and being the team that did pick up that first dragon here, maybe leads sort of favor to the next dragon comes up, Ground Zero wanting to contest it because ultimately you get that two dragons. If you roll the Hextech Soul again, this game becomes a whole lot harder to play for Ground Zero. You get a whole lot less time for 10 in those side lanes because you are just forced to group up for that dragon fight. Yeah, absolutely. I'm pretty sure uh, if you talk about stats, right, Cloud Soul yeah. is the best soul. It has the highest win rate by like 6%, which is quite a lot. You know, a lot of the souls all sit at the same point. It's like, uh, it's like 88 to like 91%, but I think the Cloud Soul is around 95 to 96% win rate. Which is a uh, fat. It's a is fat. That, it, fat lead. Yeah. Is that um in in competitive or solo queue? Because I feel like the extra movement speed, particularly in solo queue, probably finds a lot of value uh, more so than in competitive, right? Where you are just playing safer for a lot more of the game. Yeah. I personally, I, I, in in a competitive environment, I value the move speed of anything else. Like I think okay. that having it uh, extra resistance with the mountain is obviously nice, but like just having. You know, overall, you can rotate to objectives faster, you can set up faster. Uh, you know, getting that move speed with your ult is just such a big deal. I think on certain champions, like the Shivana, it is massive. The Lucian, massive. Maokai, massive. You know, being able to engage, just it, it kind of uh, shores up the weaknesses in your champ because a lot of, I think a lot of champs, especially the melee ones, are, uh, you know, counted in the late game by the fact they get kited so well, right? So, you yeah. know, having that air drag just gives you the ability to, to kite down these 80 carries. And yeah, and all those champs. Yeah, all those champs mentioned, and I mean Renekton as well. I think maybe the biggest benefactor in this game, just popping Dominus and sprinting at anyone, is heavy trades going down bottom. There's a bullet time coming through, but Enzo's going to be here to block that up with the wall. And okay. down comes his nature's grass, Lemus. There is all the sums in the world available. Only the flash missing. Here comes the glacial fissure, not going to connect, but the mystic shot does. Now Lemus is in a spot of bother. As he's stunned up, cleanse comes through, but it is too late, and the phase rush is going to get leave Lava, sorry, out of the skin of his teeth. Top side, though, Ground Zero, they realize it's their time to strike, try and find something onto this Renekton, but Lakai, he realizes he's weak side, he's full HP, he has the Dominus, he has the Flash, and there's no real way to punish. Yeah, this is extremely hard to dive. He does have the Dominus, he's just going to sit that one out, but Shurn is just going to steal away the camps. Obviously not an ideal trade, right? Both your bot lane members for two camps is not going to be the win, but still a consolation prize for Shurn on this Shivana and... I think that they do have, you know, the scaling advantage. They do have, like, the ability to win the late game, but it's not a clear-cut thing where it's just like, okay, we got the six items. Now, all of a sudden, you know, our Cogmore will 1v9 the game, right? Yeah. This is a, a much more close case where I would just give, like, a niche advantage to Ground Zero to be able to win these fights. But once again, I think it's going to come down to the setup. Whoever has, you know, the better, you know, map play, being able to get on that objective first is so crucial for how both these comps want to work. Yeah. Absolutely, and I think as you touched on, the, the setup's really important, right? The combination you see on Ground Zero, this misfortune with the Leona, misfortune with this Camille. If you can find a way to combo those champions together, you can have a lot of success in these team fights. But on the other side, you have J-Team. They have the Brawn that can deny a lot of this damage. Um, and so, yeah, ultimately, setup is going to become very, very important, as long as this game doesn't get very out of hand. And I think, so far, it's not that out of hand. 1.5k gold, while substantial at this time of the game, isn't game-defining, right? It, it, it's, it's definitely comebackable as... Maybe this is going to become a little bit harder, but Tien with that max range hook shot is going to be able to get himself out as well as get 
That ultimate away from the Renekton, but problem being, he just teleported to lane and now he's going to be forced to walk his way back as a wave comes crashing into his tower. This is the grub respawn in five seconds. There is no Dominus onto Lika anymore, but... Yeah, Lightning Trash comes out. Lava with that CC is going to be able to chain it, and now the culling coming out as Shurnfire will arrive here with that descent of the dragon, but it's still Minji wailing away at Fido's health. He's going to have to flash away, and Minji still feeling okay. Going to have to dodge out of that ability, but won't be able to do so. So he is low. Shurnfire, if he finds one more, it might be able to pick up a kill, but with the pressy attack, potentially not. Minji getting lower and lower as he tries to greed for one more wave, not going to be able to do so. Walking towards the grubs, this is going to be no ult on both Shurn and Lakai, so... Fido, two Fido's cooldowns. teleported in, Fido's found the angle, a nice ward means that Fido gets in, he gets himself a kill, and now Tien chasing away this top and jungle here of J-Team. They are going to have to concede these grubs as Shurnfire finds more objectives for himself. That's really, really nice for Shurn here, and really well played by Fido. We saw that Minji had the opportunity to just back off that wave completely and go for that fast recall, but overstays and finds himself caught out on the, uh, you know, the tempo game, but... Kurak just overextending here, you know, walking in a bad way, doesn't have the numbers advanced, they know that Bomb was in the top lane, he's gonna walk down, and this is him getting caught out by pretty much just the 2v1, or 2v2, there's not even Brom impacting this one, but Shern tries to clean this one up, Flash comes out of Brom, and it's just not enough damage to stick there, but you know, Minji here didn't recognize that, okay, the Grubs are the next objective, I need to base, I need to TP back mid to maintain priority, wasn't there on time. No, it was not, but it is gonna be okay now, J Team gonna pick themselves up a dragon. Uh, with Shurnfire, he is running down here, he does have his ult back available, but he hasn't recalled since the last fight. Uh, and we saw obviously in game number two, that we had some problems when it came to that sort of concept, right? Where we went for two fights in a row and that's kind of how the game turned on its head. They are looking for it again, and so might be caught out here. He's gonna be spotted out, at least his ward, and will likely go down. Solar Flare used, he's gonna de delay at least the kill for a little bit as the dragon will be picked up for J-Team for the trade there of that support's life. I think both teams, uh, that's the kind of scenario where you're happy, right? J-Team's going to be happy that they got the dragon, and also Ground Zero's going to be happy that they just got another 300 gold onto one of their main carries in Fido in the mid lane. It is so important for both Fido and Tien on their respective solo laners to be strong in these side lanes and garner priority for their team to be able to function coming to these objectives. Because if they just have to, you know, group mid as five and walk into these objectives, it's so hard to deal with stuff like the Maokai saplings, the Ezreal poke, and the potential engage that comes from the focal wall. Absolutely, now. Mid lane is going to be occupied by this AD carry and support of J Team. On the other side, though, Fido is still going to be here sharing XP alongside his support by the looks of things. Is Kurek around the mid lane and Lemus sitting there in the bottom side. Although, you know, Misfortune with that strut is going to be able to get to this top side faster than near on, near on every champion that exists in League of Legends. Do you see Tien staying around here? They recognize that Lakai does not have TP on the bot side of the map. They were waiting for, you know, Fighter to rotate down. They were looking for a potential engage, but they are, J Team is respecting that one, so they're just going to go to those lanes, but now they don't have control of the map, right? They've just lost priority in the mid and the bot side of the map. They're going to walk into the top river, J Team are, and just get control of this Rift Herald. And if Ground Zero do want to contest this one, no TP on Fighter, he's going to have to walk all the way up. Yeah, and, and that's ultimately, a, I think. Not ideal. Yeah, and right now I think J-Team are ultimately spiking harder than the side of Ground Zero. I think just, you know, the, honestly just coming through that AD carry, we don't quite have the Bloodthirster available for Lemus, whereas the Triforce is up for Chi Chi. And I think that alone kind of leads favor to the side of J-Team to be able to pick up advantages here as they do look for this Rift Herald. Churnfire showing his head there in the top side, won't be able to find all that much. Uh, now, Renekton coming up to this fight, it is... Fighto though staying in their bot side, no teleport available for either of those champions as Lakai now is just going to go back to answer as it's all but confirmed that JT pick up this Rift Yield. Yeah, easy pick up and that's just thanks to, you know, Grand Zero. Went for that play, didn't work out, they lost priority and now J-Team got the Rift Herald, they can group up, but Shun going in on the mid lane. Yeah, going for another play, but Nature's Grass coming out, stunned through and everything's going pretty poor for Ground Zero here, although Lemus is remaining pretty topped up in health. It's Chi Chi though, returning fire. E forward, Lemus gonna flash away, one Mystic Shot! Fantastic sidestep there for Lemus, keeps himself up. Fido. He is gonna be able to find that recall as, yeah, Fido is coming up. He actually okay. got solo killed. Yep, Ooh. just tried to, fight, tried to fight the Renekton there, and it's just 
a very, very hard matchup to win, and I think these laners' times for Ground Zero is just not ideal, right? They don't want the Camille to be into the Zeri because she's just too mobile for, you know, Tien to be able to take down the 1v1, and obviously Fighter's not going to win the 1v1 against the Renekton. So even if he does get the priority, he can't hit the tower, can't really do anything but rotate to the mid, and as his team doesn't have priority on the mid lane, doesn't want to be running there because he is their target for the side of J team. And that's just a really easy pickup for J team to win that single mission. Chi Chi in particular, playing that one extremely well, you know, flashing forward the proc, the concussive blows to, you know, guarantee the execute that comes out of Malpac. I mean, yeah, the Eclipse, Renekton with the ult against a no flash Lucian. It's a bit of a trivial 1v1. I think maybe if you have the flash, there's, there's an angle there, right? You can try and flash away from that empowered W. It's probably going to be answered by Lakai's flash, but still maybe a chance to survive. Ultimately, it wasn't up and available. And so it is a pretty clear cut win there for Lakai. And I think that's very, very impactful, right? You've just taken this uh, Lucian off the map. Hold on, there might be a fight coming out as Enso might be just caught out. Fido with that Blade of the Rune King, certainly offering a lot of damage. Bullet time coming out and flash forward. Solar Flare as well. And that's going to be a third kill now for Fido as Ground Zero. They're still playing aggressive. They're still finding angles in this fight. And Fido is going to have to be the guy to do it. A lot of resources committed for that kill there. We saw that Shun threw one of his flame breaths towards Chi Chi on the Ezreal. So, you know, we saw the flash, the solar flare, the bullet time, pretty much every cooldown come out of ground zero to get that kill. So now all of a sudden, they do have an advantage from the numbers that they garnered from that fight, but they do not have the tools to be able to fight again. They need to wait for these ults to come back. And luckily, there is no objective for at least, you know, another minute. We're going to see the setup for this dragon coming through really soon. And if this does want to be a team fight, they need to be there first. They need to get that set up. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's going to be very hard for them to walk into a Leandri's uh, Maokai. You don't have the War Mogs available. Yes, there's lifesteal, but, you know, if, if you're in the river, there's not really anything to lifesteal off as the problem you find yourself with, you know? Like, in those mid lane sort of skirmishes where you are just poking back and forth, Bloodthirster, Play the Ruin King, fantastic items. You hit that min minion wave as it comes next, and you're back to full HP. In the river, the same cannot be said. If you get poked out, there's nothing to auto attack until there's a full on team fight, and by then it's probably just too late. And obviously, J-Team, we see them now. They do have priority over this river there. Littering the Ground Zero side of the jungle, at least, with all these saplings. It's going to be very, very hard to find their way through. Shurnfire, at least, has done so, so far as Midway Prio being get, gathered here for the side of J-Team, as well as that top side. Teleport available for Lakai. We have to watch out for a teleport. That bot wave boasts likely the position that Lakai looks for. His teleport now coming in. He is just going into this... Blue sure side river, yeah, there is going to be a Shurn fire in this pit, but Lakai's found him in the Eclipse. There's so much damage, and down will go that dragon, and with that, the hopes of picking up this third dragon subsides with it. It's J-Team, three dragons to zero, a lead in game number three, and looking to get PCS on at least one series on the board. And this is Ground Zero rocking up to the objective late. They are committing everything by going through one lane. They do not care about the farm in, the, in top or mid, and this is, you know, losing a team fight like that cost them so much because now all of a sudden all the resources on the map are just being wasted to these towers and it is so hard to deal with. I think Ground Zero really needed to leave a member mid who had teleport to, you know, eat that wave and then play for flank. Obviously Tien cannot be playing front to back on the champion. He needs to be, you know, diving onto the back line and trying to execute these members that are left alone as the rest of his team is fighting against the Renekton and the Maokai going on them. But, you know, pressing tab and looking at the inventories right now, Lakai on this Renekton is absolutely massive. You know, having two items at this point in the game on a Bruiser is going to mean he is pretty much immortal, especially when you look at the inventory of Lemus. You know, he's sitting on a Bloodthirst. So he doesn't have a, a DPS item, right? He just has this, you know, defensive, offensive item. Not really going to do the most damage, but he, they need to buy time, Ground Zero. They need to wait and wait and wait. I think before they get to three items, these fights are extremely hard to win. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the one problem you find yourself at when you're sort of in one of these team comms, you fell behind and you need to wait, 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 is that... You know, you, it, it's all good and well until Dragon is a legitimate threat, and I think with how accelerated, you know, Minji as well as Chi Chi are, this Baron will go down pretty fast. As, again, similar to the Dragon, it's going to be very hard for you to find a way into this river against the Maokai, against the Glacial Fissure that can come out of in. So if the Baron goes down, or even if the Baron doesn't go down, you're going to just be able to see Lava walk up to a tower, press that Nature's Grasp, and who is tanking it up? No one at this stage can really sort of tank it up, you know, the amount of damage that comes through from this Israel following up from a nature's grasp is very, very hard to deal with. And so we'll see how Ground Zero do manage to navigate it. At least if you are at your tower, like I said before, you will be able to lifesteal up and <laughs> down comes his descent to the dragon, but the entire damage from the Shivana just gets eaten up by that Braum shield and He's not going to feel all that bad about this damage because he does have the War Marks, he does have that upgraded support item, and he does have a Ruby Crystal to get that 1500 health up and available to keep restoring. And you're seeing it here, he's 
You know, 78 health, 78 health, just constantly ticking away. And we see Fido grouping again. They feel really pressured to try and get back some control of mid lane in their top jungle. But at the same time, Lakai's just down in the bot lane, pushing the side lanes. And this is what JT's been doing the entire game. If you guys group, we're just going to go to the side lanes and we're going to push because they both feel safe to win their individual 1v1s at this point and also, you know, get out pretty safely because the Shivana just doesn't do well at killing these side laners. And if, you know, Kurak is just dis or disappears from the map, if he goes missing, it's very easy to respond to that one as well. So, Grand Zero don't really have a lot of options. If J-Team continue to play a very oppressive like they are, they can secure a very deep vision and wait and wait and wait until they, that booby trap that they set up with the Baron finds that pick and secure themselves the big prize in the Baron. Yeah, I mean, definitely slowing down now is the game. And I think ultimately, I mean, it benefits both teams, right? J-Team, they don't feel pressured to do anything because they can ultimately just play for the Dragon Soul that's coming up in two minutes. There's no reason to throw this game for no reason. You know, doing the Baron, that's a definite way to throw the game. It's very scary to do the Baron against the Shivana, against the, the Misfortune that can use that yep. bullet time. And so just biding time. On the other side, though, you are now just going to be able to get to those item spikes. We now have the solution at two items. Liam is getting close now to that Essence Reaver as well, getting a lot more damage, getting some crit on the board there for this Misfortune. Uh, see, I think ultimately the most important thing can be if he does manage to pick up the second item is Lakai being looked at. There comes the Hextech ultimate and the Culling Walls used. Lakai trying to find a way out. He's actually turning it around. He's trying to find that essence. Brock, and he's not able to do so. The hook shot comes through. Tien finds himself a shutdown. And that's what I said. Just don't make a mistake. They do make a mistake here, but two teleports available for both Tien and Fido. They're going to be able to recall. They're going to be able to make it to this Baron as J-Team try and burn it down as fast as possible. Here comes Fido and J-Team. They do choose to get off that. Descent of Dragon comes through, but GG remains untouched and Shurnfire loses half of his HP. Fido on the top side as well catches a uh, raw sapling and doesn't feel too good about that. Now, Ground Zero, this is ideal for them, right? They pushed them out of mid lane, they got the kill, they got the shutdown to Rex on the side lane on the correct member as well, and they forced them off Baron. They just need to get back on the map and make sure they have control of this mid lane again and get to that dragon. I think basing here or being late on the map is, you know, probably possibly a mistake by Ground Zero. All of a sudden, the lead that they got from killing this Renekton is just, you know, given away if J Team decide to just walk down to this bot side. But the one thing that J Team J Team can do as well. They don't really care about this dragon. While it is the, the soul for them, it's nothing for Ground Zero. So if Ground Zero do overcommit towards the bot side of the map, all of a sudden the Baron started and they have so many tools to delay, you know, shown by getting towards that pit and stealing the one away. Yeah, and I think you have to be concerned, especially for Ground Zero, is that the Shivana champ kind of can't do the two fights, right? Like, if you commit to the dragon and you have a fight around dragon and it's somewhat even or slightly favored towards J Team, Shurnfire won't have access to that ultimate and he won't be able to contest the next objective. So we see him there losing half his HP. He does still keep his ultimate, at least for the time being, but it's going to be very, very difficult for Shurnfire in specific to navigate when to use this ult, how to use it for the most effectiveness, and how to use it to not lose both the soul and the Baron at the same time. This is just Minji soloing away the dragon right now. Very easy pick up. Ground Zero, they're doing the you know the thing where it's like, okay, you guys can have the soul. We don't really care too much about you having the Chemtech soul. We want the Elder to be in play as soon as possible because that is our big ticket win condition to get back into this game. They want to flip that smite. It's very hard to keep Shimana out of the pit, which you can just use that ult plus the flash, but aggression on the mid lane. Yeah, Lemus losing his flash. We'll have it back in time for an Elder Dragon that could come through. Hectic ultimatum. GG's in a lot of trouble. And the bullet time's going to come through. Fido picks up that kill. And Minji's in the back line, though. He comes through. Lightning Crash has been used. But he's stunned up. And Lemus is finding the damage. It's a double kill for Fido. Ground Zero. They remain strong in this game. They're not going to go down without a fight. Minji, though, he is playing aggressively. Lemus trying to find damage back. Not going to be able to do so. All things hidden down a two for two. It's Fido, the big winner, though, in that team fight. This Lucian picks up a double. Huge for Ground Zero. The fact they can go even there in a, in a game state that is so dire for them, but this is more gold going over the fighter. It is nice, right? But the, the sad thing about that is they're, all their gold, all their eggs are in one basket right now. Lemus doesn't have the items he needs to be effective in these fights. We'll see that, you know, uh, while Minji does dive in, he doesn't have the damage to be able to execute him there, but this is just well played to get Chi Chi potential uh, overexertion of all their resources, right? This was maybe too much committed to kill the Ezreal because Shurn pretty much didn't, wasn't able to do anything in this fight, just died. Uh, straight away to Minji here, cleaning him up on the back line. But, you know, as we see, Lemus finds Minji here, CC'd up, but just doesn't have the damage to take him out or force him out of this fight. And even though this is a Ground Zero going two for, you know, two for two on the skirmish, it is still J-Team with, you know, control of the map. It is still, as you said, J-Team with control, but I think a good fight there and getting very, very close down to this Infinity Edge is Fido and a big ticket item, certainly, if he is able to pick that up. Uh, but as you said, I mean, yeah, all eggs in one basket. I think the problem you have in this sort of situation is... 
You know, I've watched a lot of professional Renekton games now, and, and there is always <laughs> one point in a team fight in a game that he will just flash, stun an AD carry, and kill them. And the only way around it is the cleanse. Lemus, he has the cleanse, but Fido does not. And that is a big problem, right? If, if the one moment Fido started. makes a slight mistake, he can just be immediately found. Now, Tien on the bottom side does have teleport available, with J-Team burning down this Baron out of half HP. They will have access to this Maokai ult. The Nation's Grass is coming through. Kurek might just be caught out. He has no way out. Soul Flare comes through, is not able to land the stun there onto Minji or onto GT. And it is going to be a massive team fight coming out for J-Team. Tien trying to run away, trying to stay alive, as is Lemus, but that slide. That dies, and it's going to be Lemus going down. It's going to be Tien going down. It's going to be Ground Zero going down as J Team get the clean team fight. It's a 5 4 0, and they're marching down this middle lane as they look to finally get the PCS teams on the board here in the playoffs. 20 seconds left on fire. This is a crit wave. They do have the damage to potentially be able to end this one, but I think it is going to be close, right? This is going to be the respawns coming through, and potentially the team on the Nexus. But honestly, the, the more I look at it, it looks very convincing. And this is, you know, the, the playoffs of upsets, right? The teams that we do not consider to be the ones to win, the takeaways of uh, these games, you know, drop game one in these re really convincing matters and bounce back in games two and three and have such dominating performances. Yeah, so far, I think, as you just said, the PCS playoffs thus far have continued to surprise, right? I think looking at how we came in, Bliss didn't tout them to win up against Frank. They certainly did do that here. And Ground Zero, the favorites, up against JT. They looked like it in game number one, weren't able to get it across the line by the end of the series. Smiles on the face there of the JT players. It is a victory at long last. I think I have to give some credit to Lalva. He was targeted very, very heavy in these drafts. And, mm -hmm. you know, finally he gets his hand on the Maokai and you see how big of a difference it makes for this team, right? Out of all these games, this was by far the most convincing. This was the game that you could look to Lalva and think, yep, he was a very, very big contributing factor to this game. And you're seeing why it has become so important to ban these three champions away from him. And I think now going forward, you look at Ground Zero, you look at how Aurora's been in this PCS playoffs. We need to find a way. We need to get this champion in our pool. We need to not be banning it on the blue side because it just seems like an almost unstoppable champion, even as a blind pick in that mid lane. Yeah, I think that, you know, with Aurora in particular, the there is these play styles where you like you give the champ and you try like, cause it's it's obvious, right? You leave it up, enemy team's gonna pick it, you play what you think is really good into it. We saw that attempt yesterday in the Nico, but obviously it wasn't the case. I think that, you know, teams can still approach and try, you know, these certain matchups into it. I think playing for laning phase, you know, playing for that